Welcome <laughs> <laughs> to the Five Fun Film Friends Films Podcast. I'm Isaac. Did that take a week to plan? <laughs> I'm Jackson. <laughs> hey. We're going hey. to get an intro. We're, go, we're going to get an intro. Okay, we're going to get an intro. All right. All right. All right. Uh, I am Isaac. I'm Jackson. And I'm disgusted by that introduction. <laughs> Your name's Noah. I'm Noah. That's my name. Yep. <laughs> okay. And one hell of a name at that. Noah, like the Ark? <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> Why is this so much more unnatural than the first I hate it. Out? As soon as that as soon as that red light goes on. There's something useful. I get severe anxiety. I thought that was fucking hilarious. Epic. We're keeping that little harmonica tune in there. I thought that was I was like, <laughs> just cut it after I say yeah. welcome and then I think well, that'll be fine. Okay. What's today's agenda? <laughs> What's on the agenda for today? Oh my god, okay. Here at Netflix headquarters. <laughs> so, so, last week there was a blog post put up that was a conversation that all three of us had about sort of making trailers and stuff. And we said that we would discuss how Flesh and Ivory got made which was Isaac and, uh, and uh, Jackson's sort of film. Uh, Isaac wrote and directed it. Jackson produced it. I did some script stuff. Yeah, Noah was a script supervisor and continuity and had some input on... We ended up crediting you as... A, it was assistant writer? Something like that. It was something like that. No, Noah had some great input on the story and Jackson and I thought it was more than worthwhile to give him story credit yeah yeah okay cool so i have questions that are very basic we might have answers we might have answers. we'll find out we might not we'll see depending so isaac what was the initial impulse for writing a script period why did you start writing a short what, what was the reason well, the reason is very uninspired it was because i had an assignment deadline <laughs> yep that's the actual reason. That's right. It's been a lot of my reasons here. Yeah. So in second year film school, I was in a class called Script Writing 2. And the project was to write a short film. The script had to be 15 pages or less, which equates to, through their logic, is uh, 15 minutes or less. Because there's the general rule that we get told in film school, which is it's a minute per page. Obviously, this varies. And so... I was struggling to come up with an idea for the story and I met with an old friend from high school who told me uh, about a dream that he had when he was in high school and the dream was that he went on a date and he came into school the next day and he said that he really liked the girl that he went on the date with and we had a good laugh about it because we thought that was just a funny idea. And I asked him, I said, oh, I have this assignment deadline coming up. I'm really blanking for plot ideas. <laughs> Is there any, do, you, do I have your blessing mm. to take this basic general idea and I'll put uh, some sort of my spin on it? And he said, absolutely. Because it was just, we were just um, reminiscing about something that we thought was funny in high school. Mm. At McDonald's at about 11 p.m. eating $2 cheeseburgers. And the first draft of Attraction got a 15 out of 100 because it was three days late and because the <laughs> lecturer really didn't like how it was formatted and it probably was formatted shockingly. Do you mean formatted as in just like the technicalities of the script or like the actual structure of the story? Uh, in terms of structure of the story was fine. The technicalities of the script. Okay. So direction, action paragraphs were... Uh, half a page long mm -hmm. because I thought wow the, if the more details I put into this <laughs> yeah what a poetic writer I am uh, which is not nope. uh, how I write anymore yeah that's yeah. all I'll say uh, that's that's where I decided to come up with the idea cool and so from okay so how long was the period from when you started writing the film yep. to Jackson became attached before it was done, right? But like, yes. we'll go back to that later, but how long did it actually take you to write the whole thing? 
the whole thing. So there was in total somewhere between it's debatable whether particular drafts were official drafts or just minor changes, but there was 20 ish drafts from the first half. I'm going to say around April in 2018. And then we started shooting around it was August or October. No, did we shoot in the first half of the year? Yes, we did. Yes, or first half of the year. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So it probably would have been April again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. so it was uh, one year. Okay. One year. And I wrote it through the script writing subject in second year. I wrote it through a preliminary subject heading into third year, which is the aim of the subject is to develop your story ideas with the goal of pitching them to become a graduate project for third year. So I wrote it through that process as well and received feedback. And then I wrote it in pre-production for a few months heading into shooting. Sure. And then I wrote it a little bit on set mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. things weren't working. Yeah. Can I ask how you found writing towards deadlines? Did that sort of affect the way that you uh, wrote or were you kind of fine with it? That's a good question, actually. Um, <laughs> you know what? Uh, myself in film school, the big difference between me having a deadline and me not having one is that I will I will write it or I won't write it. <laughs> right. that, that was a big thing for me. And I, I liked writing and I loved thinking about this story, but writing, I think it was, I think Kaufman said this in the BAFTA lecture that we love, is writing is also everything that you do when you don't put the pen on the paper. And sometimes you're typing and sometimes you're thinking. So I, do, I did a lot of writing, whether that was translating it to the script and trying to overcome that obstacle of taking out plot holes, making dialogue believable, thinking of set design or camera shots that are feasible for a university project. The motivation to do that side of it was the deadlines, unfortunately, because I was bad at procrastinating and I was trying to juggle other uni obligations as well. Sure. So I was always writing and I will always love writing. Um, but to put pen to pad, sometimes I need a bit of a kick up the ass. And I certainly did in university. Right. Did you find yourself having to cut corners or change things to try and get it out faster? That uh, sort of sacrificed the quality of the script? That's a good question as well. Um, in the initial stages, in the script writing subject where I got given my 15 out of 100, which is a hard, hard, hard fail, yes, because I procrastinated so much. Sure. And I was writing, but I didn't really understand how to technically write a script. And then with that is also, it's great because as soon as you understand that that you're not writing a novel and you are writing a script, then you can absolutely write it more effectively for the screen. Mm. You know, like it's, 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 you have a better understanding of what translates to the film. And I didn't actually have that understanding. I don't know if that answers the question or no, not. I think but, it does. Yeah. Yeah. So were there any, um, you've told us that obviously like that experience that your friend shared with you sort of inspired it initially. Yeah. And are there like, his name's James Waycott, by the way. Hi, James. Shout out to James. <laughs> I love you, Jimmy. I don't know James is, but I just said shout out. Regardless. I love you too, Jimbo. <laughs> Were there... I mean, you obviously mentioned Charlie Kaufman. We all fucking love Charlie Kaufman yeah. over here. But are there, like... Were there any films, filmmakers, pieces of literature, anything, any, like, artistic influences... Like, that were conscious influences, I would say, yeah. on the script. That is an excellent question. I, there definitely was, whether I can think of it right now. Mm -hmm. In third year, Noah and I, you can't see this, but Noah, Jackson, and I are all smirking right now <laughs> because they know damn well in the second year and third year university, I had just seen Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind for the first time, and I was very obsessed with it. And I loved everything from Michelle Gondry's dreamy direction to Kaufman's uh, analysis of character and the philosophy of making every character act like they're the main character in a script. I was, that was, these were fresh ideas to me. So it was blowing my mind. And every time I wanted to write, I wanted to do something that emulated that. What other influences? 
It's just other Kaufman films. Would you say... If I'm being really honest, you know, at, you, the, at the time, you're, you're, I was yeah, yeah. a fanatic. Hey, yeah, if, you're gonna have, if, you're gonna have, if you're gonna have one influence on your writing in terms of, like, movie making and yeah. shit, Charlie Kaufman's a pretty bloody good pick. Absolutely. In terms of, like, only one writer you like. It's yeah. like, if that's the only one you like, oh, like, that one was really influential on yeah. music. Well, it was interesting because when I started writing the script, I hadn't seen Eternal Sunshine yet. Uh-huh. And so my influence was I had a basic understanding of how to shoot a dialogue scene and how to shoot you know how to basically structure a scene in sure. terms of filmmaking and these would have come from my previous influences which i guess i can credit um obviously nolan i can credit fincher all of the basic ones tarantino so i can credit those guys but then when it came to putting in dream like sequences there was definitely, definitely Charlie Kaufman was helping me lead the charge on that, and specifically Eternal Sunshine and Michelle Gondry. Gotcha. I had a question, I just forgot. I, yeah. this out. I forgot what question I was answering. No, that's all right. <laughs> Midway through that, I was, yeah, I was a, I was, still am a fanatic, but oh, sorry, uh, before, while you're thinking of that, Noah, I, I learned that um, I definitely was incredibly restrictive because of how <laughs> narrow is a huge understatement my span of uh direct and conscious influences on the film work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so now when i write I, I i try to i've seen a lot more films which i'm lucky to have been introduced to and i try to steal from a bit more specifically european cinema which i hadn't even decided to dip my toe in yet i was gonna ask um, had you directed shorts before Attraction? I directed one film that Jackson starred in. It was... It was... <laughs> oh, yeah. A, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was uh, not before I, I wrote Attraction, but before I directed it. I sure. had directed Jackson, our producer, in a short film for a directing assignment, which was loosely based on a story of myself going to Sydney and making a rap song because I was invited to. Uh, I was invited to come visit my relatives in Sydney and I had a family friend down there who said, oh, by the way, while you're down here, come make a rap song, it'll be fun. I know you like rap music. And I said, why not? And so I decided to turn that into a comedy script starring Jackson, our producer, as Lil Joe. <laughs> Uh, a, you want, a, you want very, to in the podcast? a very bad rapper. No, no, yeah. I'm happy to talk about it. Okay, go, yeah. let's go. Uh, and Khan Eckford, who was the frustrated producer dealing with the uh, lack of lack of talent from the rapper, which is uh, a very good way to put my experience in Sydney as a non-rapper trying to record a rap song. And I thought it was very funny. Fantastic. I remember seeing this. I don't know that I worked on this, but I saw it. You did. You're, I did work you, on this? You're in it. You're in the room. Yeah. I remember you coming over to me and saying, wow, you're, you're Isaac, have you directed before? You're directing well. And I went, that guy's full of shit, <laughs> but I'll take it. <laughs> you, you were definitely in the you room. You were absolutely in the room. 100%. I feel so bad that I don't remember this. But like, It was horribly unmemorable, the this, film. This it was, was a bad film. This was but, a... Uh, it was funny Yeah, but at who the very cares least. a shit if it was a bad film? Yeah, I had in, so much fun making it. In, in, but like... um. So this was in 20... This was 2018 in directing uh, okay. Fundamentals. So we had just met pretty much. We had pretty much just met. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, this might have been around the time. When was... All, it's worth mentioning as well, all three of us were uh, interns on the Commonwealth Games yes. together. So we had a couple of weeks where... I know you guys knew each other pretty well before the Commonwealth Games, but yeah. uh, I think I, I snuck my way into... This little yeah, friendship yeah, yeah. love triangle we got going <laughs> on, <laughs> on the again because we spent so much time with each other and lived together for two and a half weeks. I don't know if we want to go into this or not. Just quickly, oh, we, we we can move on, but yeah, all of us we were, uh, knew each other through this as well, and it was we around renting. the same kind of time. Yeah, we had I to rent a we'll, place near there. How I actually first talked to you was we <laughs> went to I if you remember yeah I we were going to an information event heading into being interns for the Commonwealth Games, and it was on the Gold Coast. Yes. And it was about six hours where we just sat through and listened to how to operate radio equipment. I remember. that was generally remember. our yeah. purpose. And yeah. I'd actually never really talked to 
Noah. I think I might have said hi. Very briefly in like a script class in like first year, I think we yeah. said hi. That's it. And um, I, I talked to Noah. I said, hey, I recognize you from film school. Mm. Do you want to come sit with us? Yeah. And when I was leaving, I said, hey, Noah, do you want to lift home? That's right. Yeah. It was Alex Mather was there it too. It was Alex Mather as well. I was dropping him home as well. Yeah. And uh, we decided, we just talked about music and Kendrick Lamar's dam was fresh <laughs> was out. Fresh so we out. had a very at length conversation yeah. about that. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And then we hung out a lot on the com games. That's, that's how I actually met Noah. That's I said, true. hey, do you want to lift home? And then we, because it's from the coast to Brisbane, it was about two and a half hours of conversation. Yeah. We had the same shifts on the con games as well. Yeah. I remember that. 3 a.m. walking from... It was... Anyhow. The bus ride home was... It was terrible. Insane. Yeah. But, um... Okay, back on track. Yeah. J- just a little Caligram origin story <laughs> for you. <laughs> I think we said we would talk about that anyhow. Yeah. We can go into that later if people give a shit. Okay, so... You're writing this script. Yeah. You... I guess it's sort of done. There's a, there's a class at university where the tutors give you sort of a bit of feedback on it mm. and in that subject if you are lucky enough you can attach a producer even though most people don't yeah most so, of the people are in there trying to pitch their own story and generally because a lot of us are either inexperienced writers or inexperienced directors or both everyone who wants to, who has written a story wants to direct their own story yeah so there's little to no writers who are writers and directors who are directors and it's certainly no producers in that class. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, there was one. There was there one. There was one. <laughs> and so, you sort of knew Jackson a bit before that. I did. Com- uh, Commonwealth Games. Yeah. And I knew Jackson. Just a, just a nice guy from around Griffith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at him smiling. He's gone red. <laughs> um, I, I remember we, Griffith we, Uni. we specifically worked on another friend from uni's short film, which was a horror at night, if you remember that at all. Oh, remember? Yes. Yes. Okay. And we spent the entire time. Oh my like, gosh, we did too. We, I think we just kept making like hypothetical fights with like Thanos or the kid from Home and Alone who would <laughs> yeah. win, and then we just kept laughing through through the takes, and Leslie yeah. got pissed off at us a little bit. <laughs> it's the same punchline every every time for that joke. It's how long does Kevin McAllister have to set up? <laughs> that's the that's the only variable in the equation. But it, it's an I important do, one. I'm so sorry. I totally forgot about that that's... film. Yeah, I knew Jackson yeah. a bit. I knew I'd heard there was a film in second year that Jackson was the producer on, and I heard that there were a lot of logistical loops to jump through in creating this film, more than any of the other second year drama production films. And Jackson, it's all I heard about second year drama pro is Jackson save the film single handedly. I, I did not know that. That's like, actually really. Yeah. <laughs> genuinely and then i was really lucky just to come back to what noah was saying jackson ended up being a producer in the preliminary subject heading into third year and we had all had our first draft pitching in this subject and jackson saw me pitch flesh and ivory which was at the time called attraction and jackson contacted me and he said hey if no one's approached you already i'd really like to be your producer and I was so over the moon, you have no idea. <laughs> I was so, especially from Jackson. I actually wouldn't have um, picked anyone else anyway. Oh, thank so you. the fact that you asked first was just that early on as well. I couldn't believe it. I'm actually really glad that I took that class because it gave me a very, very early view into everyone's projects and uh, basically get first dibs on whatever I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> More or less. I mean, if people would like accept my proposal, then I would have first dibs and a lot of people fight anyone a lot of people wanted you to produce their yeah films. yeah i think i did get asked by a couple people you had a good rep yeah yeah absolutely you got that street cred you know yeah everyone knew that story about second year <laughs> yeah the street cred jackson can walk down any street in brisbane and he's he's good literally just high five and strangers because everyone loves me that's right what can i say <laughs> that but, was worse than the intro right? yeah <laughs> Oh man, I still have not had my coffee yet. So <laughs> yeah, my brain's still a bit <laughs> We've had dead. tea, but no um, coffee. Tea and pancakes. <laughs> tea and pancakes. Yeah. Uh, so Jackson, you actually approached Isaac about the script before the script was even done, but it was, I mm-hmm. guess, done enough for you to for it to appeal to you. 
Yeah, right? yeah. It was an early draft, um, and it definitely did appeal to me because I went away after hearing everybody's pitches and just tried to think about which one would probably be most beneficial for me to produce. And I knew attraction at the time, Flesh and Ivory now, would be... There, there were certain aspects of the film which, be pretty, which would be pretty difficult to produce. And I knew that, but I thought why go for a simple film to produce i'm not going to learn anything out of that mm -hmm. and i liked isaac as well so i thought we'd work together really really well um and attraction was the one film i just couldn't get out of my head at the time because i kept thinking about it i kept thinking about what i could bring to the table for that film and so i just decided to you know take the action and ask if he wanted a producer and thankfully he said yes absolutely mm. got there before any before anyone else could we didn't have to go into talking about pitching films at university and, and, and things like this, because it's very specific probably to what our university is. Yeah. Mm. But then what came afterwards was crewing people for the film, like yes. which people to attach and which people not to attach. You put a crew together, yeah. and, and we all know this, and we don't really need to go into this. It was, you know, amazing yeah. crew. Getting a crew attached in film school is easy enough, because you all have to do it to even get an assessment. and, and yeah. But getting a good crew together it's like well that was kind of easy because people you wanted to work with also wanted to work with you for the most part right very lucky in that regard which yeah. was really good and i happened to know a lot of these people personally heading into it which is really nice because we had a personal relationship and got along well enough to make a film so it was mostly already a friendly crew yeah absolutely and then comes the difficult part of the process which is casting Yes. Because you can be at film... Everybody at film school knows somebody who can do everything on a film set pretty much. Yeah. But you don't really know a whole lot of actors a lot of the time. And so casting is a free-for-all and it's sort of chaotic a lot of the time and you're yeah. sort of just pulling actors from wherever you can get actors. So Jackson and Isaac talk about casting. <laughs> so in regards to casting for our what was our grad slate there were two major avenues that we could go down we could use a service called star now which is essentially just a job gig posting board online specifically for film and i i guess also tv radio any sort of entertainment projects uh, which is what most people did just put up an ad see who applies it and then audition a few people that you like and then hopefully one of them is the right fit uh, the second avenue is there was a casting director attached to the university who you would present your project to and then he would go out and sort of find he would look through his network to find certain actors that fit the descriptions that you gave him and then you could audition those as well um we did both we, we did. went through both avenues and i think if i remember correctly most of them were from star now that we got yes absolutely we re received a lot of applications Mm. which was really good but it's also it's a lot of work to go through everyone because you obviously want to give everyone a chance and Jackson and I it's our first time properly properly casting for a film with a budget that was bigger than the budget of the film mm. uh, second year did you request uh, self tapes from actors that they recorded themselves yes mm -hmm. and then through that you were able to select ones that you liked and ones that you didn't like and then once you had the, the self-tapes that you liked, you asked those people to in-person auditions? Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. The ones that we liked the most, mm -hmm. which is um, at the same time as well, it's worth mentioning, where while doing this juggling three other university subjects, so we're accepting auditions between classes on university <laughs> campus, we tried to see everyone that we could, everyone that we thought was at least had some experience or had a really good self-tape mm -hmm. or both. And classes don't allocate any time for you to audition anybody. So you just have to use your own time you whenever you can. You just figure it out. Yeah. Correct. Exactly. And I had a part-time job at Nando's. I know, Jackson, you had a job at the time, I'm yeah. pretty sure. Oh, yeah. It was tough, but we got there. Yes, we yeah. did. We had to um, basically book a room out in the university, just set up some tables and chairs, and uh, let the people know where to find your audition room. A few of them got lost. Most of them made their way. That's it. Very understandable. <laughs> university campus mm. classrooms are not easy to find if it's your first time on campus it can be a bloody maze so for the self tapes of people recording themselves did you give them sections of scenes like a page of scene not the whole scene or something like that or the whole scene 
Oh, we mostly. I, I think we I gave think them we the gave, whole scene, yeah. right? Because That's it's it's smart. it's also yeah. it's a short film, so a whole scene in I believe our film had it had eight or nine scenes. I can't quite forget. Wasn't a lot, yeah. Yeah, so eight or nine scenes spread out across fifteen to twenty pages. And when you sent... each scene was two or three pages at the longest. Okay, yeah. gotcha. And when you sent the scenes, did you send any notes to the actors, like directorial notes, to say like, here's how I want the scene performed, or any direction? We would have loved to, but there was too many online applications yeah. to mm. direct every single mm-hmm. one. We just believe that if we got... We hope that the, the the pitch document that we put out was enough direction sure. for such a big call out. So that was... The pitch document was part of the, the ad? Yes. Okay, so you thought through that that's enough direction for them to know how to perform yeah, the scene? Yeah, and okay. we wrote character profiles. So we figured oh, okay. if we can get a decent performance off their first attempt, mm-hmm. then we'll direct in auditions, which is what we did. We ran through four or five takes with each actor. Right, right. Asked so, them how they felt about the character, if they had any ideas to contribute, mm-hmm. which was a big one. So you gave them what you felt was like appropriate context for them to deliver a performance? Yes, for the self-tape. As much as we could self-tape. without over you know personalizing it too much sure. purely just on time and too many applications yeah 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 and then you brought people in in person for auditions yes and okay we're not going to go through every single actor we'll just go <laughs> through joel who's the lead yep. so tell us the story of joel's audition so you know what jackson you can tell this one actually i like and, i and, like how you tell it and work into this why he was cast obviously yeah why he was cast. Um, yeah. There's plenty of reasons why he was cast. So yeah, yeah. Um, we saw Joel apply for the ad. We liked him. We liked it. We, did he? He gave a self-tape, didn't he? I believe he did. Yeah, I believe he did. And we liked what we saw, of course. So we invited him to come to the campus uh, to audition in person. When the day came, we had the room set up. And uh, unfortunately, because of uh, he was coming from quite a distance away, there was traffic and the university is a bit of a maze to go around. He was a bit late, which he mm-hmm. was extremely apologetic for. And we could five see that... Five minutes tops, for clarification. Yeah. It was nothing. Maximum five minutes late. <laughs> really not even late. Really <laughs> barely late for yeah. an yeah. That's yeah. on time for me. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he was extremely apologetic, and we can see that he was very sincere. Um, like Isaac said before, we got him to audition with the first scene of the film in which he has a discussion with his mother and he just i don't know how else to say he just killed it Mm. he just did really well and um every time we tried to take the scene in another direction and give him a bit of feedback he would take that on board change up his performance a little bit and was just very cooperative in the whole process and uh, i believe like he just had a pretty good understanding of the character and we just really liked what we saw did one of you two read across from him Jackson would yes, read lines. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he was always reading, and then I would uh, just watch. And, and how, in the audition, did you run the scene multiple times? Yes. How many? I think I want to say four. Okay. I can't remember from 2019. That's a yeah, fair few times. Four. For him especially, because every time we gave him direction, it was getting better. Right. Or it was getting more specific <laughs> yeah, to sure. what I had in mind. And, I, and we'd been standing in the room with him for ten minutes. And it was getting more specific because of your direction? Uh, because of the direction, and I'm sure that he, for him, I don't know what was happening in Joel's mind, mm-hmm. but Jackson and I, with all the actors, tried our best to put actors at ease in the room and try to understand that it's okay if you mess up a take, we're going to give you multiple takes, so please try something. Mm-hmm. It's just us. We're recording a camera, but this is just for reference for ourselves. Feel free to try something. So I'm sure because of that, Joel would have gotten more comfortable and better throughout. But also, with regards to my direction, he was getting closer and closer very quickly to what I, at the time, imagined the character Will was like in that scene, in that short snippet. So after each, I guess, take, did you give like specific direction as to what you wanted from the next one? Yes. And did he sort of apply the direction each time? Every time. There right. was a complete, a, a near complete understanding of what I was That's giving fantastic. to him. Which is, which is unbelievable. Yeah, Jackson yeah. and I were immediately stoked. Mm-hmm. I think, obviously we couldn't say it because it's horrible policy. Be like, hey, you got the job. Because who knows what can happen. Maybe 
you know, Phil Hoffman walks in next after him, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then you have to go, well, I have to tell them. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> I'm just going to throw in a really quick specific note, which is that yep. like, I directed I directed Joel as well, and it was exactly the same experience. It's just like, yeah. can you please do this specific thing in the next take? And he would just have it down completely yeah. by the next one. So He's, he's uh, incredibly adaptive, and finding him on Star Now... He was one of our Star Now applications. He wasn't even through the casting agent. And Star Now is open to everyone. It's Everybody. an online forum. Anyone can apply. Yep. And, and there's Charles a lot of, lot of actors out there, and he just happened to be one of them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, I really liked, as Jackson said, I just want to emphasize as well, I really liked Joel as a, a person mm-hmm. as well when I met him. He was very, very likable. Which is super important. It's super mm-hmm. important. Because you're discussing with with films, or how I felt about it at the time, probably still do feel this way, is you're trying to figure out people, and you're trying to talk about people, hypothetical people, on the page with people. Mm -hmm. And it really helps when you can tell that your actor understands people, or just at least sees things in a similar-ish way to you do, or at least in a way that can translate to you. You and really want, like, understanding, empathetic people. Absolutely. And yep. Joel was both of those things, plus talented, mm-hmm. plus conscientious, mm-hmm. and he he was very open to listening. And as soon as he left the room, actually, Jackson and I turned to each other, and we said, that's Will, that's our guy. So, something <laughs> along those lines. Yeah. So you, you'd bet you'd made the decision... Almost on the spot. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, I think we had a couple more for the rest of the day. Obviously, we saw them too, but Joel Just in case. was Joel. Yeah, yeah. Cle- cleared out the competition. There you go. He's fantastic. And then, what was working with? Joel like on set and and was it just the same experience in the audition room? More or less, more or less. One thing that was really great is with. So I mentioned that in second year I directed a short film. It was, it was my first thing I'd ever directed. It was a bad short film. And I hadn't directed a film that was on the scale of the third year film. So You lot, made a big jump. I made, yeah, <laughs> huge. Because you had multiple locations. You had, yeah. like, the crew it was like... How many people were on the crew for your, that it first film? It was about... Uh, oh, for the first film, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was 10. Yeah, yeah. And, and this was like... And we jumped to 25. Yeah, ever. yeah. <laughs> With multiple people in, in each department. Yep. So I had to have not just meetings with the crew, but meetings with individual departments. Sure. So a lot of, and I'm, I'm bringing this back to Joel, but at the time I was figuring out, okay, how am I going to, as a director, coordinate this with the lighting team, mm. with production, with my cinematographer, Angus Williams, who I was very lucky, is incredibly talented. So he made my job very easy because mm. we planned ahead and we knew what, we were going to do heading on but execution is still tough when you're shooting on a schedule you need to get things done so the biggest thing that i found with joel is in rehearsals joel was more or less pretty he was pretty consistent and as a first time serious writer i believe that i got out of him a lot most of what i think i would see on the day in rehearsals because I understand my story. I don't think I was experienced enough as a director to get much more out of it or to see much more. Joel would have new ideas on the day when we were shooting, so that was excellent. But more or less, the greatest thing with him was he was incredibly consistent and almost all of the takes that he was in were printable, which was great because at the time you're juggling camera movement, you're juggling blocking, sound, you know, it's great to know that you have one near constant in the equation, which mm-hmm. was Joel. Mm-hmm. So he had ideas on the day, but he was just the man didn't miss, more or less. <laughs> Joel yeah. didn't miss. Yeah. Joel didn't miss. Throwing in a quick note about doing continuity on the film. Joel was doing continuity for me, so I have to get, <laughs> I have to go in like between takes and pour up a glass of water that was drank so that the takes match so you can edit the film properly or for example Joel was like fixing curtains behind him because he had to like get up and sit down between takes so he would like rearrange the the furniture behind him it was insane and he was like yeah was that just there and I was like yeah mate don't worry about it sit down and worry about your performance he's like nah I'm good like (laughs) yeah 
Joel, I, luckily enough, we, we did a couple of weeks of rehearsals, and Joel is in every scene in the film, and we had rehearsals with every actor, so Joel was in multiple rehearsals a week with every actor. So heading into it, Joel knew pretty much exactly what we were shooting for mm-hmm. and what we were going to try and get from him while juggling these other things. So I'm sure he would have the confidence to worry about continuity. And Well, a lot of the time it's rare to have someone who's so aware of every other department. So not at all to take away credit from Joel. He was prepared and he also looked out for everyone. He made Noah's job easier. He made Jackson's job easier. My job, for sure, easier. Do you, it's brilliant. Do yeah. you like to be friends with the actors that you work with? I don't have to be, but it helps. Uh-huh. For sure. I don't, you know, when I, when I audition, I don't go, hey, what kind of music do you like? We should... <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's, I know it's, what you it's, mean. It's fine. If, if we're not friends, it's okay. Yeah. I don't, I'm not making this sound... <laughs> I was about to say... I'm not making films to make friends, which sounds like <laughs> okay. F you, that's I, a horrible way to put it, but I'm making films because I, I love telling stories and I love the collaborative process. I'm not trying to get people to like me or make friends. I gave you a very bad layup to a <laughs> That's question, okay. obviously. It's a very like awkward, strange question to sort of ask, Yeah. but the reason I ask it is because when you're making, I feel like any time I've made a film, when I know the crew and like they're friends of mine, I find that the film moves much more smoothly than if that's not the case. And I feel like actors on set are often, at least in film school, are, are sort of exiled from the crew in a sense. And they can tell they're walking into envir- to an environment where everybody already, sort of already knows each other. So they're like the new presence in the room and they don't want to impede on uh, the already like formed friendship. Like m- most actors who yeah, seem to right. come to set seem really standoffish from crew I just was that your experience on attraction a little bit with um it was more so with some cast members than others sure and obviously it's difficult because you have to being in a rehearsal room where it's just me and the actors is one thing but getting an actor we have a few emotional scenes in the film and Acting in a room with your director and acting in a room with 25 crew members, Mm -hmm. it's two totally different things and it can affect performance as well. So that's another thing I think would be um, how being friends with your cast helps. Mm -hmm. That's definitely a big one. It's just, I really want everyone to feel like they're comfortable on the set. Yeah. Because if anything goes wrong, we can just do it again. There's no pride lost. There's no, none of that. This is absolutely going to have to be a thing that we revisit. Two of the members of, of, of Caligram are actors sort of first and foremost, I would say. Yeah. And so <clears throat> there's going to be multiple conversations about acting and actors, and we'll talk to them <laughs> in front of them, to them, to, to sort of flesh this out a little bit more, and it will be great to hear their side of the story, I think. Absolutely. So Taylor Glockner and Jack T. Murphy. Mm-hmm. I think heading into next week, we're going to talk about the ins and outs of the production process, shooting, and working with the actors on set. So tune in for that next week. Jackson, can we get a can we get an outro? Yeah, oh, man, I go. can give you one hell of an outro. Don't you let's, worry. Let's here we go. go. Good afternoon. Good evening. And good night.